My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Sometimes it's as simple as looking under the hood and finding out what's really working. That's why we created the Kramer COVID-19 Index. We wanted to capture the zeitgeist of this market. Now, while the averages were all over the map today, Dow dipping 109 points, this would be inching up 0.01%, NASDAQ gaining 0.78%. What happened? Well, the COVID index shined. Not unusual. It was up 1.7%. You know, it's now gained nearly 6% since we created it late April, leaving the Dow and the S&P in the dust. The reason? Because when it comes to the pandemic, the components of the Kramer COVID-19 index are part of the solution. They're not getting hurt, they're helping. And that's a big difference versus much of the S&P 500, where you got a lot of stocks that are coronavirus roadkill. So let's take a look, just to be able to show you what I'm talking about when I say this, guys. Why don't we just take the top 10 performers from when we started? Because I want you to understand why this $11 trillion index really captures this moment. The best performer, it's one of the most shorted, actually hated stocks in the entire market. Peloton, Peloton Interactive. People even think that's a, <laughs> interactive is just cool like this. 9% of the float sold short. But this maker of connected exercise machines is a perfect fit for the stay-at-home economy. People do want to work out. Nearly all the gyms are closed. And even if your gym is open, there is a pervasive sense that going there is just asking to get sick. So you have to recreate the experience at home. Peloton lets you do that. The closed... They're off the Peloton at our house. Yeah, my wife kind of hung stuff on there, you know, because Flywheel's been closed since March 20th. And uh, my once New York State Velodrome champion, Lisa, has been forced onto her Peloton that I bought her. She's lucky. One of our producers, Heather Gaines, says that hers is back ordered until late June. Now, there's a business. Stock's up nearly 35% since we created the COVID index. It's up 50% for the year. You may hate it. It's working. Number two. Uh, of course, a vaccine. Moderna. I first encountered this biotech at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference two years ago. They use artificial intelligence powered by Amazon Web Services to develop vaccines and gene therapies faster than anyone else could do. Fast forward to today, and the whole world's relying on Moderna to give us a COVID vaccine before the end of the year. I'm skeptical. The record for fastest vaccine development is four years, and Moderna's never taken one of these to market before. But... If they can do it, yeah, the stock's going to keep exploding higher, which is why it rallied 32% since we created the COVID index, and it's up 242% year-to-date. And a lot of the vaccine stocks were really going nuts after the close because some organizations were giving out money to the winners, or winners. I love that. Third best performer, well, you've seen these guys, Livongo Health. Yes, remarkable personal health platform that helps uh, people with chronic illnesses manage their conditions. They started with diabetes. The platform now includes hypertension and obesity. These are three of the biggest risk factors that can make COVID-19 fatal. I like to think of Livongo as a custom-made digital health coach. No wonder it's up more than 30% since we created the index. It's up 114% for the year. Glenn Tolman has come on. He's chairman. Number four is Everbridge. Hey, they were just on the show. You see a theme here? We have focused on this endlessly. Everbridge is a cloud-based software company that helps businesses and governments handle critical event management, CEM. Think disaster response, including pandemic response. You probably never heard of them, other than if you watched the show last week. But they serve eight of the ten largest cities in America, along with nine of the top ten investment banks, nine of the top uh, ten largest healthcare providers, 46 of our largest airports. Everbridge owns this market. No wonder the stock's up roughly 30% since we created the index, nearly doubling since the beginning of the year. Fifth is one a lot of people say, oh, Jim, why do you harp on this one so much? It's called Coupa Software. Uh, with millions of Americans setting up their own home offices, you better believe all sorts of businesses are in dire need of expense management. And they need expense management software, which is Coupa's bread and butter. I know it sounds banal, but who cares? Coupa's working. Stock's up 28% since we rolled out the COVID index. It's up 43% for the year because it's a textbook play on this stay-at-home economy that we keep talking about. 
Number six, well, anyone who's watched the show for 30 seconds knows Dexcom is one of our favorites. It's a remarkable company. It makes continuous glucose monitors for diabetics. There's no need to repeatedly prick your finger to test your blood sugar levels. It's the gold standard. Just like Luvongo, the pandemic gives people with diabetes an extra sense of urgency here. Dexcom's rallied 26.7% since we created the index. It's up more than 90% for the year. Seven, what I don't talk enough about, but I'm going to change that. It's called Cloudflare. Yeah, it's a cloud-based software company that helps businesses smoothly and securely run their websites. For example, they work behind the scenes with e-commerce sites and streaming services to ensure a consistent level of quality and protect those platforms against cyber attacks. Needless to say, it's exactly the kind of business that works when so many more things need to be handled online or at home. Now, why do the stocks up more than 20% since we created the index? 65% gain for the year. There's another one. These were all last week we covered. We're on our game. Eighth is Square. There's one. This one's complicated. As many of Square's brick and mortar clients have been obliterated here. But in addition to the normal payments biz, Square's got this digital peer to peer payments app. It's called Square Cash, and that's on fire. When the company reported last week, the stock initially sold off hard. But then it came roaring back as investors realized that part of the business was in terrific shape. And that's why the stock's now up more than 20% since we created the index. Ninth Massimo, medical device company, that makes non invasive monitoring equipment, especially pulse oximetry systems that take your pulse and monitor your oxygen levels. At a time when hospitals all over the country need more ICU capacity, these are the machines they have to buy. Hence why the stock's up 20% since we created the index, 58% for the year. I always carry a little Massimo portable pulse oximeter because it's a great warning system if you're worried about being sick with COVID-19. Finally, there's Beyond Meat. Yeah, we had them on the show again last week, right after still more revelations about COVID outbreaks at meatpacking plants. CEO Ethan Brown is a man on a mission. He wants to shake up the whole food chain, and he's an incredibly effective evangelist for plant-based protein alternatives. Right now, he's cutting prices so Beyond Meat can take share from the meat guys. Plus, he's got two huge deals, one with Starbucks rolling out in China, and another, I think, is in the offing with McDonald's. It's in Canada right now. Could be bigger. I'm betting he pulls off something gigantic down the line. Beyond Meat's gained 20% since we put the uh, index together. It's up 73% for the year. Now, I, I know it seems like I stacked the deck here with Kramer COVID index, but I can rip off down the next 10. I rip down the next 10, the next 10, the next 10. And all you'll hear about are stories that are about companies that are just like these, that perform better when you're stuck at home and worrying about your health. There are simply an immense number of health, technology, and safety companies that thrive when we're stuck in lockdown. And that's why the averages are so skewed. They're the ones that have been driving the big gains lately. Their strength masks the rot underneath in the broader averages, where stocks that are in the COVID blast zone, travel, leisure, aerospace, cruise lines, they've been crushed, steel, banks. Bottom line. Remember, there's nothing irrational about these rallies. The stay-at-home names are simply the right stocks for this difficult moment, and there are so many of them. $11.5 trillion, entire SP only worth about $27 trillion, that they aren't the tail wagging the dog. They are a competing dog, and that dog is winning. <laughs> Jerry in Texas, Jerry. Hey, Jim. How are you today? I'm good. How about you? Good. Doing well. Thank you. Hey, I have a general two-part question for you. Okay. The markets hit their recent lows on March 23rd. Since right. that time, they've rebounded roughly 30-something percent. We have record unemployment, oil prices that are historic lows, companies unable to provide guidance and their profits are going down, many businesses are going bankrupt, people unable to pay bills, plus we're fighting the COVID virus. My two questions are, do you feel the market is overbought at this time? And two, do you think we may revisit the March lows inside the next six months? I don't think we're going to re revisit them. There's too much. There's too many trillions coming out of the government that really helps. Uh, we also have negative interest rates, which are really fabulous. We're very close to negative, really fabulous for stocks. And while there were a lot of what you said about uh, certain companies giving guidance not so good, there's lots of others that are doing quite well. And that's been my theme for Mad Money. Let's go to Brian in Connecticut. Brian. Booyah, Jim. Booyah. Uh, Jim, I'm 32 years old. I've owned this company for about five years, and uh, it's been in decline ever since. And today it's the leading le uh, decliner of the S&P 500. Um, what are your thoughts long-term of Under Armour? Nike. Just go with Nike. It, you, know, you, you don't want to bottom fish. You want to go with the best. And Nike is the best, plain and simple. How about Cody in Illinois? Cody. 
Booyah, Jimmy Chill. All right, man, what's going on? Can I shout out my girlfriend, Sam? Hey, my question's about Fleer. Um, I'm wondering if you think they're poised for uh, a lot of growth uh, because of the uh, need the thermal to imaging. People. I think the thermal imaging is real. I think they're leader, and I like the stock. I think it's a good stock. A little bit of spec, but I think Floor Systems is real. The move has been pretty exaggerated, though. All right. It's as simple as looking under the hood and finding what's working. These rallies aren't irrational. The stay-at-home names are the right stocks for this difficult moment, and there's $11.5 trillion of them. On Man Money Tonight, jobless claims over the past five weeks have totaled over $26 million. As COVID-19 continues to impact the economy, how are freelance workers managing during the pandemic? I'm asking the CEO of Upwork, new company for the show. Then, as states begin to reopen their economies, which companies could come out the winners? I'm going to give you my take. And as more companies seek out automation, is it time to consider live person? I'm going to be talking to the CEO. So stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.